Welcome to the programme. Thank you, Nigel. I, I meant what I said a few minutes ago. I yeah. felt the king in Parliament. Yes. It is our system. It yeah. is absolutely unique. Uh, you couldn't design it. No. It sort of evolved over a period of time. And the point about a constitutional monarch is that they are politically neutral, and the Queen played that game beautifully. Yeah. But all through history, there have been those that don't like this system. Yeah. And perhaps the truth is, republicanism, UK republicanism, has actually been smaller in our lifetimes than very often it was in times gone by. Absolutely. Uh, the, 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 the last time it was big was in Queen Victoria's reign around about uh, mid-19th century when she went into this retirement uh, because of Prince Albert's death and people got fed up with it and there were Republican clubs all over the country. Um, but of course that went again when she came out of retirement and there were the Jubilees. Um, the thing is, Nigel, so I've written quite a lot about this, uh, with Republicanism, it's, it is in some ways an honourable creed. I mean, it doesn't mean people aren't patriotic if they're Republican. Um, well, well, that, Peter, that's interesting. I'm yeah. going to stop you for a moment yeah. there. So Tony Benn once ticked me off. We were doing a paddle somewhere, and Tony Benn ticked me off. He said, he said to me, he said, just because I'm a Republican doesn't mean I'm not a patriot. I flew a Spitfire, you know. I said, right, OK, I yeah, stand yeah, corrected yeah. on this. So, yes. I completely understand yeah. that it can be a perfectly reasonable, honourable, and in its own way, patriotic yeah. position. What I'm talking about is the new hard left. Oh, right, yes. Which is, frankly, Marxism, which wants to bring the whole country down. Well, they want to bring the whole country down. I mean, m mixing two points up in a way here, because the fact is, uh, you were mentioning earlier there in your introduction, Nigel, about the, how wonderful it was to see the King in Parliament yeah. and to see all these ceremonies. These are coming new to probably most of the population. It hasn't happened for 70 years. I can't think of a better way of strengthening our culture. Like you, I don't want to be political, but let's face it, over the past, what, five years, our history and our great achievements, they have all been pretty much atta under attack. Under constant attack. Constant attack. And so suddenly we're seeing them in their full glory. I have found it in some ways the most moving part of it. <coughs> when it comes to Republicans, uh, yes, I, a lot of it is, uh, as you say, the hard left, who want to basically destroy pretty much everything. Yeah. Know, it's not just the monarchy. Um, I think that they have miscalculated um, in some ways because they're the sort of Republicans who are very active now, they saw as their big trump card, their big argument was Prince Charles and that he was going to be terrible, and uh, they would never, ever attack the Queen. There was never any mileage in that. No. But they were sort of biding their time. Um, what's happened is that Charles seems to have seamlessly gone into this position mm. so far. And more importantly, there is an enormous apparent public respect for the way he's doing it. So they've miscalculated on that front. And I think that the monarchy is coming out of this stronger. The only thing I hope doesn't happen is that I hope that uh, all these reports that we hear about Charles wanting to make it uh, yeah. slim down, a smaller monarchy along the Scandinavian lines. But isn't it pretty small already? It, well, it is in terms of numbers. Look, uh, do you remember, we're roughly the same age, when we were growing up, there was the Duke of this, the Duke of that, mm. there was the extended family. Now it is actually a relatively small amount. But when you talk about a smaller monarchy, it really sort of I see it as meaning cutting down on the pomp, cutting down on the ceremony, cutting down on all of those things. That would be a huge mistake, I think, because one of the reasons there has been this amazing reaction to the Queen's death and to Charles' Charles' succession is because of a big monarchy. It is well, there. Perhaps he'll get that message then. I would hope so, because I think it would be just at the very time when we are in an entirely new era, we're in an entirely new political era, and more importantly, so many things are under attack. We need actually continuity. I mean, for balance, Charles hasn't been doing this for very long. No, 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 that's fine. But I think in an odd way, look, I was no great fan of Charles, actually. Uh, I have been impressed in his speech when he was uh, broadcasting to the nation. And he made it quite clear in that kind of rather muted way um, that, in fact, he understood exactly what the constitutional mm. conventions were mm. and that he wasn't, you know, he was going to uphold them. I took that to mean 
I know that I'm not going to be kind of like raising my head, you know, over the parapet to talk yeah. about things. So I took kind of great comfort from that. Um, one thing as well, you know, as I say about all of these ceremonies we've been seeing, one of your uh, uh, viewers there said, it's, you know, you've had constitutional constitutional monarchy explained to you. Yes. And, and that has been very evident. But at the same time, I've been struck. I live in Windsor now, Nigel, and I've been struck. Well, you clearly, as a royalist, you would. Oh, exactly. <laughs> um, at the epicenter, really. I've been struck by the numbers of young people, young families coming and putting flowers oh, down. Yeah. And again, they've never known anyone else, but they are also learning history, possibly for the first time. I think this is so valuable and it, it's a terrible and awful way to learn it maybe yeah but if there is a silver lining it is that yes and i think perhaps in scotland as well the fact that i mean yes all of this yes. has been in scotland until tomorrow yeah. and i think yes I, I i sense it may you know andrew neil wrote in, at the weekend he thought charles would be the end of the union but i'm not so sure no i would have thought that once but actually it's very odd looking at those scenes in scotland looking at the scenes in aberdeen and uh in edinburgh um, you know, obviously people always turn out for big events, but actually, you know, I was surprised. I've been surprised. And I think it might change the general dynamic. Well, we'll there. see. But where there will be a problem is in the realms. Yeah. I suspect. Mm. I think the Australians will have a re-examination mm -hmm. of constitutional monarchy. Although, frankly, the alternative is a very dreary, <laughs> clapped-out ex-politician. I mean, I, I used to look, yeah. 20 years ago around universities, I get asked this question, and yeah. I said, well, you know, what do you want, President Kinnock? Because yes, you know, yes. that's what you'd yes, finish up with. Yes, you, yes. You'd, you'd finish up with somebody from, from either side of the divide, yes. but it would be fairly dreary. They, 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 they'd barely even be household names. Well, they wouldn't. So, so that may, but the yeah. one that worries me is Barbados, Yeah. Remove the Queen as head of state yeah. without a referendum. Yeah, yeah. As a direct result of the Chinese Communist Party yeah. lending them large sums of money, yeah. we're seeing uh, the Chinese Communist Party, Chinese government, trying to use Commonwealth countries, bribing them money, looking to build naval bases, yeah. etc. And already they've been in the West Indies, one or two calls to change their constitutional arrangements. Keeping the Commonwealth together, Peter, will be much harder, in my opinion. Oh, I think it, it was obviously her life's work. If you had to point to one achievement of the Queen that stood out, it was actually the Commonwealth. Yeah. I think the point has to keep being made about the Commonwealth, that it is entirely voluntary, mm -hmm. right? Because the way that people talk about it now, particularly radicals talk about it, is as though somehow, and, and the American media, I might say. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, well, the New York Times in particular. The New York yeah. Times yeah. and uh, MSNBC and all these people, is that it's somehow some colonial kind of hangover. It is entirely voluntary. I will agree, it is a, it's gonna be a tough call for him. Yeah. But I think that, again, we might be surprised if he prioritises it. Um, Gosh, I think he seems to be. He's going to be very busy, isn't he? Uh, well, <laughs> yes, uh, let's hope he's got energy of, what is he, 74 now, 73. He's yeah, no, now, he's, yeah. he's got a lot to do. Peter Whittle, thank you for your thoughts thank and your you positivity not. about the monarchy in this country. Thank you.